Chemical kinetics is the study of the rates of chemical reactions, how fast or slow the concentration of reactant molecules change into products. The reaction rate is the changing concentration of a product or reactant per unit time. In your organic chemistry, you've met lots of mechanisms. How do we know if a mechanism is right or wrong? Well, we look at the way that the rate varies with the concentration of each reactant. And this can be used to investigate a reaction mechanism and disprove it. The rate law is the dependence of the rate on the concentration. It is investigated experimentally and the results express as a rate law. So here we have a reaction of an alkyl bromide with water. And the rate has been found to be proportional to the concentration of the alkyl bromide and to the water. But in this very similar looking reaction, the rate is found to be proportional only to the concentration of the alkyl bromide. The concentration of water doesn't matter. And this is telling us that these two reactions are going through different mechanisms. The first is in fact an SN2 and the second is an SN1 reaction. K here is the proportionality constant and it's called the rate constant. So for a general reaction, A plus B plus C goes to products, the rate is given by the proportionality constant, the rate constant, and then each concentration of the reactants raised to a certain power, x, y, or z. We can only determine the form of the equation, the value of k, the value of x, the value of y, and value of z, by looking at the experiments. And this is what we're going to do in this video. So the rate law can only be determined by experiment. We can't just look at the chemical equation in order to get x, y, and z. X is the order of the reaction with respect to A, and Y is the order of the reaction with respect to B. Z is the order of the reaction with respect to reactant C. Again, there's no relationship between the coefficients in the chemical equation and the values of X, Y, or Z. We have to use an experiment to work them out. So we write down a general rate law. The rate is equal to a rate constant times the concentration of each reactant raised to a power x, y, or z here. If x is 1, we talk about a first order reaction in A. The rate is proportional to the concentration of A. So that means if we, in our experiment, were to double the concentration of A, then the rate would go up by a factor of 2. If we were to increase the concentration of A by 10, then the rate would go up by a factor of 10. If x turns out to be 2 from our experiment, the reaction is second order in A, and the rate is proportional to the square of the A concentration. Now if we double the concentration of A, the rate would go up by a factor of 2 squared, 4. If the concentration of A were to be increased by a factor of 10, then the rate would go up by a factor of 10 squared, 100. Less commonly, if x were 3, the reaction would be third order in A, and now the rate would be proportional to the cube of the A concentration. If we were to double the concentration of A, the rate would go up by a factor of 8, 2 to the power of 3. So we do this for each reactant in turn in order to work out the order with respect to that reactant. So let's look how we do this. So in this experiment, we're going to take our alpha-carb bromide, we're going to react it with water and form our products. We can vary the initial concentrations of our reactants, our alkyl bromide and our water, and measure the rate. So in experiment number one, we have a 0.1 mole per litre solution of the alkyl bromide, a 0.1 mole per litre solution of water, and we measure the rate to be 3.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per litre per second. Do a second experiment and a third experiment. So let's look at our first two experiments. What did we do? Well, we doubled the concentration of our alkyl bromide. It went from 0.1 to 0.2, and we kept the water the same. So any change on the rate was purely down to doubling that alkyl bromide concentration. We doubled the concentration of the alkyl bromide, and the rate doubled. It went from 3.7 times 10 to the minus 3 to 7.4 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration of alkyl bromide doubled, the rate doubled, so we have an x equals 1. We have a first order reaction. So x is equal to 1, which we don't normally write. We just have now that the concentration of alkyl bromide to the power 1. Okay, let's look, now look at experiments number 1 and 3. What did we do? 
Well, now we've doubled the water concentration. It went from 0.1 to 0.2, and we kept the alkyl bromine concentration the same. So any effect on the rate was purely down to doubling the water concentration. But what happened? We doubled the water concentration, and the rate stayed the same. So the concentration of water has no effect on the rate of reaction, and so y is 0. And so we write our rate law down again with y equals 0. Anything to the power 0 is just 1. So we have our final rate law that the rate is proportional to the alkyl bromide concentration. The rate is equal to a rate constant k times the alkyl bromide concentration. So, the so now we've worked out the rate law, we can work out the value of the rate constant. If we've done everything correctly up till now, it shouldn't matter which experiment we use, we'll work out the same value for k. So let's use experiment number one, in which case the rate was equal to 3.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per litre per second, with a concentration of alkyl bromide and a concentration of water of 0.1 moles per litre. So we worked out that the rate was equal to K times the alkyl bromide concentration, so the rate constant K is equal to the rate divided by the alkyl bromide concentration. 3.7 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.1, gives us a value for the rate constant of 3.7 times 10 to the minus 2. What about its units? Well, we can always work out units from our equations. On the top, we have moles per litre per second, and on the bottom, we have moles per litre. So the moles per litre cancel, and we're left with overall units of seconds to the minus 1. We're going to have to do this every time. The units of K depend on the reaction order. They don't have the same value for each kind of equation. So let's look at a second example. This time we've got the reaction between gas NO and Cl2 gas. Because this is in the gas phase, we're using partial pressures instead of concentrations, and so we've got things in terms of atmospheres instead of moles per litre. But we still write down our rate law in the same form, so it's equal to K, some rate constant, times the partial pressure of our two reactants raised to unknown powers, X and Y. So again, we do some experiments. We vary those partial pressures, and we work out the range of the reaction. So between reactions 1 and 2, the partial pressure of NO has been doubled, and the concentration of Cl2 has stayed the same. So the effect on the rate is purely down to the doubling of the partial pressure of NO. What's happened to the rate? Well, it's gone up by a factor of 4 this time. It's gone from 0 0.065 to 0.258. It's gone up by a factor of 4, when all we did was double the NO concentration. We doubled the NO concentration and the rate increased by a factor of 4, we must have a second order reaction. So, so far we've worked out that the rate is proportional to the square of the NO partial pressure. And now we use experiments number 1 and 3, because this time we've doubled the Cl2 partial pressure and we've kept the NO partial pressure the same. This time doubling the Cl2 partial pressure has led to the rate doubling from 0 0.065 to 0.13, and so we have a first-order reaction in terms of Cl2. So the overall rate law is that the rate is proportional to the partial pressure of NO squared multiplied by the partial pressure of Cl2 to the power 1. So the last thing to do again is to work out the rate constant. So assuming we've got our rate law correct, it shouldn't matter which experiment we use. So we're going to use experiment number 1 again in which case the rate was 0 0.065 atmospheres seconds to the minus 1, when we had partial pressures of NO and CO2 of 2.16 atmospheres. So the rate was equal to the rate constant times the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of CO2. So we rearranged that to give us that our rate constant is the rate divided by the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of CO2. Put those values in, and we can work out the rate constant. We can again try and work out our units by looking at our equation. We have an atmosphere on the top and an atmosphere squared and an atmosphere on the bottom. So we can only cancel one of those atmospheres and we can work out the rate constant has a value of 3.7 times 10 to the minus 2. And its units are atmospheres to the minus 2 because atmosphere squared is on the bottom, seconds to the minus 1.